With a new edition and new miniatures on the way, I thought it would be a good time to take a look back at the six previous starter sets Games Workshop has released for each edition of 40k. Hello and welcome back to Wars Pets Tactics for a retrospective quick look through each starter box set. We'll be taking a brief look at the contents of each one, talking about how they've changed over the years, the improvements in miniatures, and what the future might hold for us. I feel like these big battle box sets are really quite iconic to the entire 40k experience. I'm sure a lot of you guys watching will have started the game with one of these. If you can remember any details that were particularly good or particularly annoying about any of these sets, then please let us know down in the comments below. I have owned most of these, but not all of them, so my knowledge might be a bit lacking in places. In any case, let's jump straight in. So first edition Rogue Trader 40k didn't have a big starter box set all of its own. I think that Warhammer 40k was more finding its feet in this edition. So the first big true starter set for Warhammer 40k came in second edition. This one came out in 1993, and it's arguably one of the boxes that really made Games Workshop take off, and made Warhammer what it is today. We've got some absolutely stunning retro artwork on the front here, with the Blood Angels and the Space Orcs, as I believe they were still known back then, duking it out on the front cover, and the older logo for Warhammer 40k that predates the one that just got changed. I think the contents of the box really harken back to that sort of 90s feel. We've got big bright colours all over the place. All the rule books are very much printed in primary colours, reds, yellows, blues. This one comes with an absolute ton of cardboard as well. In terms of actual content in the box, you've got those 20 tactical marines, newly upgraded from that RTB01 kit, the first plastic space marine infantry kit. This box set was around before my time, but I still did wind up having a few of these guys in my collection. I think I got them in a trade or something. Very much monopose and no heavy weapons or anything, but still very much the precursor of what space marines are today. On the orc side, you've got absolutely tons of models, and I recognise these guys in droves from when I did eBay selling in a big way. Because this kit had been so prevalent, people tended to have an absolute ton of the older style orc boys and Gretchen, the monopose ones that hold their guns up high and have the pointy hats, and every single orc is holding his axe in the exact same way. I think just with the sheer amount of people who bought this kit, they didn't usually tend to sell for very much. If you can look closely, then you can see the absolute gem of this kit, which is a cardboard orc dreadnought, He's the one framed in white in the very centre of the image. It was literally a printed bit of card that sits in a plastic stand, and it has all his stats and war gear written on the back of him. I suspect that technically for Games Workshop tournaments, you could still play him as a Death Dread if you wanted to, though I think you might get some strange looks. You also, of course, get a ridiculous amount of cardboard in this box. There's an absolute ton of cardboard ruin walls, which to be honest seems like a pretty good and cheap way of getting some actual pretty convincing looking terrain. I know Games Workshop have very much moved over to nice sculpted plastic, but for a very cheap option, this doesn't seem too bad as a starter idea. I'm sure we can make something pretty convincing out of cardboard with modern techniques. You also get dice, an absolute ton of templates, counters and markers as you can see at the bottom here. The second edition rule book, a scenario book, reference sheets and Codex Imperialis. I guess at this point nobody could know that Games Workshop was going to be a company that existed for years and years. I suspect if you just bought one of these boxes for a relatively small sum of money and not opened it, kept it in pristine condition, I honestly suspect that people will be prepared to pay hundreds and hundreds of pounds for it now. It does make me think similar with some of the later box sets, but presuming Games Workshop doesn't go belly up anytime soon, I wonder how big a return on investment you could have made if you'd invested in Games Workshop boxes rather than stocks or anything. In any case, let's move on to the third edition starter set. This one came out in 1998, and I remember this one with fondness, because this is the first one that I ever got. I think I joined the hobby just at the very end of third, just before fourth came out. The box art for this one features some black Templars, and of course we now have the updated logo for Warhammer 40,000. The back gives you a bit of an intro to the game. You can see some of the models here, including plenty of Dark Eldar Capolite Warriors, Space Marines, and a Landspeeder. The Space Marine kit is an updated one. You now get the option of adding a missile launcher and flamer to your standard marines, and they're much more of a multi-part plastic kit compared with the previous edition. Games Workshop really have made leaps and strides with plastics here. They very much set the standard for additions to come, with the standard space marine arms holding bolters that could be posed out will or swapped out for special or heavy weapons. You also get the space marine land speeder that's pretty much unchanged to this day. Another new kit allows you to build any of the different variants, but this one really doesn't look out of place. Just having a quick check, yes I still have this land speeder in my collection, complete with a snapped off flying base, as when I was 11 I definitely didn't know any better than to glue it straight in with plastic glue. I think this box set was a little bit asymmetric in terms of value, on the opposing side you have the Dark Eldar, which I believe were a new faction for 3rd edition, and you got 20 Cabalite Warriors with them. Again while doing eBay reselling I came across quite a lot of these guys, 
almost always absolutely smashed to smithereens. The classic cab light warriors just have a lot of really thin spikes and things jutting out at awkward angles, meaning that they're really just not the most durable of miniatures. In this one you do get the actual big 3rd edition rulebook, which is already quite a hefty tome, but not quite as big as they've got these days. I do remember that this one has rules for every single unit in the game within the book, which was pretty handy just for seeing what all the other factions could do, even if they got some expanded things in their codexes. This box also came with a pretty decent amount of terrain, there's some ruins, some tank traps and some jungle trees, definitely terrain that makes you think of classic Sistel miniatures now, and also the usual dice, ranged rulers and templates and bits. Definitely fond memories here, if I hadn't been bought this, I'd probably not be sat here making YouTube videos right now. Next we move on to 4th edition, and we're jumping up to 2004 here, and it's the first one that I've actually been able to confirm the price of online. It's honestly a lot harder than I thought it would be to go back and try and find the prices of things that Games Workshop sold in the past, particularly in the age when the internet was still fairly new. The Battle for McCrag was released in 2004, and was 50 US dollars to buy, and would equate to roughly 68 dollars today if adjusted for inflation. This battle box pitted the Ultramarines against the Tyranids of High Fleet Behemoth in some really iconic lore where the Ultramarines were wiped out to a man on their own chapter homeworld, only saved by the arrival of their reserve companies. This is the only other one that I didn't wind up getting personally, although again I saw absolutely tons of these guys when I spent some time reselling things on eBay. In the box you got a very slimmed down rulebook, a Battle for McCrag campaign book, which I believe had various missions including ones that featured this Imperial pilot, who was a cool little standalone miniature without any proper rules in the Space Marine Codex, but he featured in a fair few of the missions here as the Ultramarines were trying to defend him against Tyranids. On the Tyranid side you got far more models, you got 6 Gene Stealers, 8 Spore Mines and 10 Tyranid Termagants. But in terms of points and things, fairly similar on both sides I think. I believe that the Space Marine kit is the exact same one from the 3rd edition, although please correct me if I'm wrong. Probably the biggest benefit and biggest draw to this box was the quite generous amount of terrain that you got again. In particular this pretty stunning crashed Imperial shuttle, which holds up absolutely fine today. Moulded plastic bits that would certainly flesh out any realm of battle board. I think the terrain slant was something that just didn't interest me when I was younger, and to be honest in general I'd still rather buy box sets that have more miniatures than more terrain in, and I think that might be actually a reason that Games Workshop didn't do terrain in the boxes from here on in. As well as this, I believe along with the gene stealers you got some spore chimneys I think they are, and you got some force field barrier markers to represent an bit of an impromptu imperial defence line. Now we move on to 5th edition, with Assault on Black Reach, which came out in 2008 and sold for $75, which is $90 today, inflation adjusted. This one pits the Ultramarines against the Orcs, and I believe in the battle for Sanctus Reach, and here Games Workshop really transitions to the ethos of starter box sets going forward. In this one, Games Workshop basically subbed out the terrain for an absolutely enormous amount of miniatures. I think they were partly able to make quite so many, because rather than having multi-part plastic kits where every option was available, not that, that was really so much of a thing besides the tactical squad in the previous box sets, these are some of the more modern Games Workshop monopose miniatures. The orcs come in about three pieces, I believe with the head and the slugger arm, and I believe some of the space marines are very similar, just with backpacks and bolters to make them complete. In the box on the Space Marine side, we actually get a proper hero for the first time. We've got that iconic captain with a power sword and bolter, who I must say was a very nice miniature indeed. Ten tactical marines, including a missile launcher, although this time they're monopose. Five Space Marine terminators, and an easy build dreadnought armed with a multi-melter. The dreadnought in particular I thought was very cool. It basically makes a few compromises on design, such as having a slightly smaller power plant on the back, to allow it to be included on the sprues for this box. On the Orc side, you've got an iconic war boss with a power claw, who honestly I think looks as good or better than the Orc war boss sculpts that we have today. 20 Orc boys with slugger and choppers, 5 monopose knobs with sluggers and choppers, and then 3 absolutely lovely death copters. I think that the biggest tragedy of this box set is that those death copters have as of yet never been released for the Orc range, either in a monopose or a multi-build kit. Games Workshop is currently still selling the ancient metal or fine cast version of the Death Copter, after Assault on Blackreach was discontinued about 8 years ago now. There are no new sources of these excellent Death Copters. I appreciate they probably do need to make new moulds if they want to sell them individually, but honestly just for an Orc fast attack choice that they've already got all the computer designs for, I am kind of surprised they didn't just shove these all on one frame, and just give Orc players an easy build set of Death Copters that aren't considered one of the worst looking miniatures that Games Workshop sells right now. In general though, compared with the Battle of McCrag or the 3rd edition box beforehand, we've just got far far more miniatures and far better sculpts. 
the price has gone up a bit, but in all honesty this was an absolutely amazing box set. You did get a rule book, it was a mini 5th edition rule book that didn't have the expanded narrative and things, but did have the entire full rules for the game, so it was an excellent one for getting started. Definite fond memories of this one as well, I believe that this was the one that I started Orcs with. The Space Marines I decided to paint up in a completely different chapter colour scheme, and I believe that I still have every single one of those Marines to this day. Now we move on from 5th edition to 6th edition, definitely a lot less well received than 5th edition as a whole, but it did have another pretty good box set. Dark Vengeance came out in 2012, and it cost $110 at the time, which is $123 in today's money. This one pitted the Dark Angels against the Chaos Space Marines, and was interesting that they went this way, as I believe it's the only one where they didn't leave the Space Marines without any markers on them. These guys have sculpted Dark Angel iconography all over them. I'm not sure if this was necessarily the best way to go with the Space Marines. Sure, Dark Angels are an incredibly popular chapter, but if like Assault on Black Reach or Dark Imperium after it had just left the Space Marine details off, I'm sure plenty of other Space Marine chapters would have been tempted to pick these up. I remember discussions all the time about how best to remove all the iconography if you wanted to use these really quite cool and discount value models in a different sort of Space Marine force. The chaos in the box are the Crimson Slaughter. I believe there were new warbound created for the release of the box, and they feature Crown the Relentless, a Chaos Lord, a very snazzy unit of Chosen with spikes and bling all over the place, and also a new Hellbrute, which I think was when Games Workshop decided they were going to differentiate Dreadnoughts for Loyalist and Hellbrutes for Chaos. On the Dark Angels side, you've got a Company Commander, a Dark Angels Librarian, a Tactical Squad, I believe armed with Plasma Gun and Plasma Cannon, five Deathwing Terminators with an Assault Cannon, three Ravenwing Bikers, which I think were the only models that I used out of this box, painted up in my own chapter colours, and you also got an Interrogator Chaplain if you bought the limited edition box set, which I think came out a little bit early. Again, even more characters and heroes than there were in the last one, and it was quite fun that they included some special and heavy weapon options that were a bit more different to normal. On the Chaos side, they have of course that Chaos Lord, and then a unit of 7 Chosen and 20 Cultists, both of which are also in very similar positions to the Death Copter, where Games Workshop, having sold tons of copies of this box, decided against following up the release of this box with their own multi-part plastic kit, or even easy build kits further down the road. I think both of these rankled a bit. The Chosen came out in an era where Games Workshop really hadn't paid much attention to the Chaos line for literally decades with standard Chaos Marines and things not being updated for several years yet. They only got round to redoing most of the Chaos older miniatures line in the Vigilus campaign in 8th edition, which was seven years after this box set was released. These Chosen very much heralded what could be done with Chaos Marines that Games Workshop hadn't got round to doing yet. Even now, I think they'd be very welcomed if they were either a multi-part kit or even just monopose models, looking like fancy blinged-up Chaos Marines. In terms of cultists, Games Workshop currently only sells a box of five of these sculpts. I think they used to sell them packaged with an exalted champion at some point. So now if you want Chaos Cultists, it's either these, convert your own, or maybe pick up some of those new Cultists of the Abyss from Blackstone Fortress. Again, just slightly annoying as a core troops unit. I know there's plenty around in the second-hand market, but I can't help but think that they would sell quite a few of these if they did redo the moulds for them. In any case, another very classic box set this one. It came with a miniaturised rulebook again, much like 5th edition, as well as a campaign book. And this has been the only box set that Chaos have actually featured in out of the start collecting boxes, despite being arguably the archetypical bad guys of 40k. To be honest, seeing this box, I can kind of see why they don't tend to do that quite so much. It is Marines versus Marines, which means there isn't quite as much of a difference between the forces as some of the others. Now we're ramping up even further, and we get to 8th edition with the Dark Imperium box that introduced Primaris to our lives, which I know wasn't a universally popular move. This box set came out in 2017, and it cost $160, and is now no longer available from Games Workshop. This one we have the Ultramarines against the Death Guard, the Ultramarines who have recently had their Primarch returned to them, defending Ultramar against the forces of Nurgle, following the opening of the Great Rift. I must say that compared with the previous two box sets, Assault on Black Reach and Dark Vengeance, this very much feels like another step up. Again, just like the last two box sets, every single model in the box is a new sculpt, but aside from the Plague Marines which existed before, every single model besides them was also a new unit. This is the box set that launched Death Guard as their own individual standalone faction, and it was certainly very nice to see another Chaos faction get a lot of love. This box set followed 7th edition, which had been a bit of a dark age for Warhammer 40k. Rules-wise, things have been getting increasingly more silly, as well as not really too many new advances in the story for a while, had really driven quite a lot of people away from the game. Games Workshop actually releasing FAQs, driving the narrative forwards, and actually starting to release value boxes in the start collecting box sets, or now this Dark Imperium box, convinced a whole ton of people to return to the hobby, 
and Dark Imperium played no small part in making the Warhammer 40k community bigger than it's ever been in the past. This box set does cost a little bit more than the previous, but in terms of miniatures and contents per the money that you invest, then I think it's a far better deal. Instead of two or three Space Marine characters, you instead get four, in the Gravis Captain, two Lieutenants and an Ancient. You do get a similar number of Space Marine infantry compared with Dark Vengeance, with ten Incessors, five Hellblasters and three Inceptors, but all of these are quite a lot upscaled on the previous, and you really get quite a lot more miniature for how much you pay for. Just the Incessors and Hellblasters tended to be about the same size as the Terminators from previous box sets. The Death Guard contingent is pretty convincing as well. Again, you get three characters compared with just the one previously, the Lord of Contagion, Malignant Playcaster, and Noxious Blightbringer. Seven Plague Marines redone with new sculpts and far larger than previously. 20 Pox Walkers in place of the Cultists and the new Feated Bloat Drone, very much taking leaves from the Blight Drone of Nurgle that Forge World sell. On top of that though, this box contains the full 8th edition rulebook, the big relatively expensive one, rather than just a mini deck like we've seen in the previous two boxes. It really does make it a one-stop shop for starting 8th edition, and it still remained one of the better ways of buying in Space Marines or Death Guard ever since. You also get a core rules pullout, two mini codexes for Death Guard and Primaris Space Marines, and the standard dice and ruler that you get in most sets, though of course no templates this time as they've gone the way of the dodo now. I was a really big fan of Dark Imperium, and also its slightly more condensed miniature focus box No No Fear has been pretty good examples of Games Workshop selling new recent sculpts at a very good price to get people into the hobby, and just as an opportunity to pick up some cool miniatures myself. So with Dark Imperium now going away, we come to the future. So far all of Games Workshop's talk has been about this new Indomitus box set, where they have told us it's not primarily aimed to be a starter set, it doesn't have dice or rulers in it, though as I have mentioned in a previous video, I don't really think that this is the biggest deal. There are things that you can acquire very cheaply elsewhere. It remains to be seen exactly how much this one's going to cost. I suspect very similar to Dark Imperium, it's looking like they've upscaled the amount and quality of the models, but I suspect that they will have a relative increase in price just to compensate for this. If Dark Imperium is limited edition, then it kind of implies that there's going to be a starter box coming after this. I'd find it very unlikely that Games Workshop wouldn't have some kind of starter set to get into their game, as otherwise they're not going to attract very many new people. So far, in terms of general trends, I think that their starter sets have been really good. I hope they continue to offer some great value and cool new sculpts and miniatures, and I'm sure that they'll grow the hobby and sell a lot of these boxes to both new and experienced players alike. So if you have any particular nostalgia for any of these box sets, then please let me know down in the comments below which was the first one that you started with, and do you have any of the old miniature relics still around in your collection? If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, we'll have plenty of other 40k discussion coming out over the next few months, including plenty of coverage of the upcoming 9th edition. If you have been watching my content regularly, I'd just like to mention that the channel does have a Patreon page, which is how I have so much time for making videos like this, as well as helping support the channel and keeping new videos coming. Patrons do get a few other advantages, they get to see regular Tactics videos early, there's regular votes on what sort of videos you'd like to see next, and regular monthly prize draws, where I post out some miniatures to lucky Patreon winners. This month we're giving away three copies of the Guard Start Collecting set, and next month it'll be three copies of this Indomitus box. You get one ticket in the draw per dollar pledged on Patreon. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, or you'd just like to help support the channel, then the link is down in the video description below. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.